welcome to the Christmas special, and for today's video, I'm going to review the Christmas Carol. Now you may be asking, which one? Well, I'm going to check out one way back from 1949. This version of the Christmas Carol is a low-budget black and white television special, and it is stated to be the oldest extant straight adaptation of the story. And it was originally produced as a syndicated production for airing on 22 stations across the U.S. on Christmas Day back in 1949. So with all that out of the way, let's check it out. So this special is narrated by my man, the legendary Vincent Price. Gilbert K. Chesterton once said, In everybody there is a thing that loves children, fears death, and likes sunlight. And this thing enjoys Charles Dickens. Not if you're a vampire. Anyway, story takes place seven years after the death of Ebenezer Scrooge's business partner, Jacob Marley. And Scrooge, played by Taylor Holmes, is one hell of a boomer. Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Christmas. Humbug. Christmas, a humbug? Every idiot that goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding. What an asshole! So yeah, Scrooge here refuses a dinner invitation from his nephew Frank, played by Robert Clark, and he begrudgingly allows his overworked and underpaid clerk Bob Cratchit, played by Pat White, to have Christmas Day off with pay. It's not convenient. But it's only one day in the year, sir. A poor excuse to pick the pocket of your employer every 25th of December. Wow, what an asshole. Later that night, Scrooge is then visited at home by Marley's ghost, played by Earl Lee. Marley tells Scrooge that he has a chance to avoid the same fate, and that he'll be visited by three spirits, and he better do what they say or he'll be cursed for eternity. Being very much in need of repose from the experience he had undergone, or shall I say, fatigues of the day, he went straight to bed without undressing, and fell asleep in an instant. Hey, just like me during a Christmas bender. Anyways, the first spirit shows up, the ghost of Christmas past. And he takes Scrooge to the past, surprise, surprise, and he sees his lonely childhood at boarding school. Oh, I remember that Christmas well. I felt so lonely. My playmates, they didn't like me. Yeah, with your attitude, I don't blame them. The ghost of Christmas past says that he'll take him to the time Scrooge got divorced over his greed for money, but Scrooge refuses. Then the second spirit, the ghost of Christmas present, shows up and takes Scrooge to Bob Cratchit's family feast and introduces his youngest son, Tiny Tim, a cheerful boy who is seriously ill. Beautiful Christmas table. It would be more beautiful if we had a turkey, but we'll manage. Of course we will. See what a happy family your clerk has on only 15 shillings a week? 15 shillings? I'd kick his ass if he paid me that much. Anyway, Scrooge asked Spirit about Tiny Tim's fate. I see a vacant seat and a little crutch without an owner. No, no. Say he will be spared. My life on a globe is very brief. It ends tonight. Tonight? Yes, yeah, Scrooge. This production is cheap as fuck. And finally, the third Spirit arrives. The ghost of Christmas future. And he takes Scrooge to the future. No shit, Sherlock. Anyways, the ghost shows him that Bob Cratchit and his family are mourning the death of Tiny Tim. Then the ghost reveals a group of local businessmen who said that they would only attend a funeral unless lunch is provided. And the ghost then shows Scrooge who they were talking about. <sighs> Then Scrooge awakes on Christmas morning, a changed man. He then goes to dinner with his nephew, Fred, along with Fred's wife and Bob's family. And take it away, Vincent. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. So that was The Christmas Carol. I couldn't find any info if this was a success or not, but we'll cut to the chase. I personally found this, like, mediocre. As you can tell, since this special was low budget, it couldn't exactly adapt the whole book, and it feels like it's being put on fast forward. As for the performances, they seem decent. And honestly, for me, the only reason to watch this is because of Vincent Price. So long story short, it's not bad. 
but it's not good either. So I'd give it two and a half money boxes. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye. Poor enough. What right of you to be dismal? You're rich enough.